try to, oh, hold on, sorry, my bad. Yes. Make it like, make sure it's parallel. Oh yeah. Or perpendicular, sorry. Hello, I'm Giovanni. I am the Wing Structures lead for Design Build Fly. And what I'm doing right here is I'm using a CNC hot wire cutter to cut out a test wing for our test plane that we're building in this week. We're cutting out a 2412 airfoil that has a three degree wing twist. So from this side to this side, there is a twist on the actual wing itself. And normally that would be a process where we would have to take two stencils and sort of align them and then hand move everything, a hot wire across those stencils. With this, it's a lot more accurate. It uses G-code to actually know precisely cut out uh, airfoils, which allows us to do a lot of airfoils in a relatively short amount of time versus one airfoil that might be messed up in a longer amount of time. If this is the cross section of the fuselage in the box, this will this is gonna be it. There's gonna be nothing sticking out anywhere along the sides. For size, yes, for top maybe. Okay, but so, like aside uh, from this area, everything here we can work with, right? Yes. That's basically our max bar uh, dimension for the fuselage. It's going to be in the middle of the wing. What does this bar look like? It's a rectangle that's going to be inside the wing. That's like embedded this? in the wing. No, no, no. Uh, it's this bar that's running this way. In the wing. This is top. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. You're right. So, actually, run through that one more time. Yeah, sure. So, what's the objective here? We're trying to figure out whether making the beams twisted makes them less structurally sound. And then what happens with that is you're going to have to calculate probably first the moment of inertia for each of those, and then correspondingly the resulting beam stress. Right Now, once you have beam stress, you know what amount of carbon that's going to need. Right? Assume the configuration has like foam in the center or something like that. And then you can say that, okay, now because I know that this is the XYZ beam stress for each of the options, I know how much carbon is needed. So ultimately, if you twist it, the beam is going to be heavier and that is our pro like what we're telling you. But the problem is, if it's fixed, fixed like that, there's nothing to keep the middle from breaking. So we have to make something strong and it has to be pulled to the side of the fuselage. Because we don't have ribs this year. Because previous years they just connected to the ribs. <laughs> to the ribs, which unfortunately we can't do this year. But that's the thought. Does that kind of work? Interference fit? A lot. Yeah, if you're like in our preliminary discussions when we were first talking about this, this is what we were talking about, which is like two ply or three ply of just carbon. The battery on different missions, so it's on the CG, like around where the electrons package would be for other missions where there's no. It might it might move, but we need to plan for with the electronics package, so where it's gonna be like the tightest space, I guess. What was the 5.5 inches thing that you were doing? This was the 6S battery, so it's bigger than that. This is our minimum. Uh, ASE. That's just what you know, short. short. Yeah, it is would be like I screwed it up more. No, the battery just doesn't get like bigger and bigger like as the battery size increases. Okay, so how big is it? I have no idea the exact dimensions, but I know that like if you make it smaller, it starts getting like more rectangularly long. So basically, we need a structural component in here. You have to click the other. Besides, just okay. So this besides just the rim. This like, is this is that. That's the, yeah. That's in like this. That's it. Yeah. So that like that needs to be a stru actual structural component, right? So which you you understand? It can't just be attached to the side. There actually has to be a piece in, so it distributes the load, so it's not just on the skin. You can't see that piece of pylon. What is that? You where you can just plug one piece of pylon. It's a lot of material that's connected. Oh, and then interface. Yeah. Oh, so we can make our own interface. That's what we can do. Yeah, we can print one. We can make our own interface for the whole thing then. Yeah. 
Hey, that's a big brain dick. So this is an equation from Raymer. So this sees how it shows how the CO max changes with the flaps. And so we're gonna turn that function of takeoff distance into a function of flapped area. So then we can see how changing the flap area actually affects the uh, takeoff distance. And seeing if A, we can get more weight, or B, we can just get a safer takeoff at the worst case. And similarly, we also have for takeoff distance, this equation doesn't have a graph because I didn't plot this yet, but uh, this basically shows the like angle of the zero lift of our airplane. So like, it, it shows how changing the, um, the cord length of the flaps affects that value. So if we can get that closer to zero, because we have a camber, so the a, the zero lift uh, alpha is negative, because if it's tilting up, obviously that's to tilt down for that. So if we can get this, like reduce this as much as possible, then we'll have even less to like overcome on takeoff. So this is showing how the cord affects that, and then that previous one is showing how the area will affect this, so if we can combine both of those to optimize and see which like combination of um, yeah, span plus cord will give us the best results because we also have the structures like five inches for the uh, mounting of the wing to the fuselage. So that wing area will affect, will take into account like general area, and then this cord will see like the cord, so we can see how much span of the thing of the uh, wing we need for flaps, and then we can make the ailerons the rest of the uh, span of the wing. Right now, there's still a lot of TBDs and structures, way more than I was hoping for going into like the week design review um, and I think a lot of that's kind of due to like every meeting it seems like we make a huge change to how we're gonna make the fuselage or something so I think we need to s make a decision and stick with it just for the sake of staying on on track yeah tonight's probably like the last night of like that deliberation yeah and we'll have to go hardcore on structures yeah Kansas model up uh, to predict like the deformation that we're going to see under various loads um, and everything but the bending or the um, sorry the twisting is real real shoddy. <laughs> Can I say everything but the bending? Like one was on this one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the bending's fine, I think. Cool. Awesome. We we'll verify that. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah, I have some questions about your model because when uh, you showed me the results, I was like. I have questions, so. Yeah. Also, Aaron, I think the Master of Dimension spreadsheet should have nearly everything you need in terms of actual dimensions now. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me know if you have anything else you need. But we're starting to look at dynamic, but um, please don't expect dynamic stability stuff anytime soon. Um, AVL is <coughs> yeah. bad. We have that conversation with um, Colin already, yeah. which is like you have a little more of an extended timeline. We need an actual configuration to analyze for stability. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then today was just focused on getting everyone PDR details together, which seemed to have been going well. Having the conversation of like, okay, let's modify this part and modify that part. It's like well, we don't close out like just with the first well, iteration. Especially when we build the first plane, we'll have yeah. a good idea for it. We'll have some calibration. Yeah. yeah. Members that want to help build the prototype, it's about 15 people. I was going to ask if we want to do more than that, but I think I'm just going to say no on that. I think that's about enough people to do it. If we need more, we can call them in, but I think any more than that and like the short timeline we're working on is going to get too hard to manage. Uh, but I want to get an idea of what we actually need to do before I do that, so hopefully in this meeting we'll figure that out. Um, and then the final thing on there is the new hot end for the Prusa finally arrives, so I can go in tomorrow and fix our 3D printer. So, lots of news. Okay. Uh, a few minutes ago, I sent the FEA results to Saviado with a data sheet and the engineering drawing. And during the meeting, like uh, an hour ago, we scoped onto five server models into top with structures and error spot uh, each specifications like weight or, or space inside the wing. And I finished up the wing test plan with procedures, so I guess everybody can just follow the procedures without me present in there. Ideally, you should be there. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, that but is you how complete that degree, the procedure like, is. Yeah. He's actually running the event, so he's going to check everybody in and whatnot. Uh, we did have to agree to some COVID guideline stuff, so I will be providing Clorox wipes and a cute amount of hand sanitizer, and we are asked to wipe down all surfaces we're using before we leave. Nobody has filled out either purchase order as of today yet. Um, we'll do that by the end of the night. Friday, okay, yeah, yeah. cool. We'll yeah. PDR with everyone else from outside. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we can get that done by then, so everything should be on track. Yeah, okay. By the way, we were talking about some fuselage designs that would simplify your payload by a lot, which is that it can just be a block. 
so <laughs> uh, we'll come. We'll, we might come to that tonight. So uh, right. probably should. Yeah, <laughs> probably should. Is right next week. Um, also, I was, well, if we're getting on to this other thing, I was thinking we should nail it down. I was trying to get the box dimensions finalized. Well, okay, I was having Wind Tunnel being dependent on whether we got the two part fuse. Okay, that's the one. Okay, that's been that, so then let's do that last then. Constraining feature. Um, let's do the let's do the final airplane configuration before the prototype, because that also affects the prototype. So. Alright, let's reel up the Yeah. Is there so long or like Okay. So here's the geometry as it currently stands with an updated tail. Hear ye, hear ye. Excuse me, Jake. Well, so here's current values. Now, if I hop over to the two part fuselage, we then go to this. So, how long are we thinking? Design is currently up to 49 inches. 49. Uh, what are the, the, so it breaks out the taper, right? Less drag because smaller uh, surfaces. I don't know if the criteria is looks for, looks more right. Yeah, it it looks, looks better. better. <laughs> I mean, honestly, bro, nature doesn't look <laughs> whack if it doesn't work for it. Like, so. I it will say work. airplanes do kind of do follow the trend. If it looks right, it's probably going to fly yeah. at least not half as The rudder deflection is much greater. I guess that goes under more control authority for the pipe itself. Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like that's just kind of an altogether thing since if we're moving it back or just automatic, that should more or less take some of the feeling, especially with the volume coefficient. I mean, you get more space inside the uh, fuselage for whatever wires, batteries. Yeah, but, but the empanage is dead. Yeah, because the empanage is empty. So that goes to one con, then, like, weight. Yeah. Well, okay, the weight discussion, I feel like either is maybe it breaks even since we are adding extra fuselage length, but we're also right. taking... Oh, they so are like one-to-one one is what we've seen, right? Like, yeah. Are you moving the wing back in this situation? I am moving, yeah. yeah. The wing will move back. Seven inches. So, okay. Well, seven. two inches. Two inches. It was previously five, I increased it to seven. Oh, okay. Oh, and okay. we could probably slide it even further back if we wanted to. Just, you know, it's slight. So more room in front of it. This will give us more room to adjust CG. As the CG problem gets mitigated. Put the battery horizontal instead. Well, but then if you do that, you are... Um, you your CG you, there. Yeah. And yeah. then you'd have to probably move the wing back again, I guess. Yeah. Um, and also, wasn't it just area that matters? I I'd, be, I'd be more tempted to say I feel like if once you start playing aspect ratio, you're going to get some losses out of that, but I still think it's just dry area. Also, the fuselage on this thing's tiny. Do keep that in mind. So theoretically, we are probably maybe optimizing level. In two parts, and it, I mean, it's just in general, I mean, it's bigger to build, so it's going to take more One time 50. to build. It's going to yeah, you need two more materials. Materials. It increases complexity. Yeah. So increase material. I guess like I don't know if. But then we're, ta we're talking about things that aren't necessarily performance related. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think that's a. I mean, I think it's we can add things enough. Like stuff right here. This will be. The, this is a vertical stabilizer. Yeah, this will be embedded with. Uh, embedded with this part, right? No, the taper is the longer section. Is it? Okay. Really? It could probably go either with this way, but I feel like the taper is the one longer section is probably better. Thirteen. Should be. So like the outer dimension is thirteen. Uh. Yes. So then we don't fit because we're 13 from, like if we stack two fuselages on top of each other, it's 13. Well, so keep in mind, well, you've got the taper there, so. Yeah, yeah. cost-benefit analysis. I feel like we're losing performance yeah, and cost potentially like, chase, but that's the we're gonna build the plane, but it'll be like, not at the performance that we want it or like the flyability aspects. I think when we start mocking this up, we'll have like a good idea of like yeah. where to put things. Maybe some new Dimian. Yeah. I think that this vertical, I think that these staff no, yeah, 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 would be on the plane. Yeah. Or was it eighth inch? Sorry, no, you're losing an eighth inch on each wall, so okay. a quarter inch on each dimension. Oh, okay. I was going to say eight, I was going to say, okay. I want to move the motor actually further up <laughs> anyway. Um, so if we can have some type of mount there, this can move up, and then this battery no longer interfaces. Because this, if it's on here, it has this thing that pushes the battery back. Make sure that we, when we assemble these mounts, that they match up with the holes on the wing perfectly. 
Yeah, and these are like, the, the hole in the wing is actually shifted upwards for this one. So this wing mount is aligned with the bottom, but this one's slightly shifted up. So I didn't want to want to try to make those yet. Okay. But. Well, I mean, yeah, as long as it just has those notches that we talked about, like going into the the bulkhead, then it's fine. So some things about the design review, guys. I mean, like. You gotta be comfortable with answering questions, right? Like they're not like any, they're not like personal attacks. Like they'll ask a lot of questions. So you gotta know your shit. Like with your sub teams, like you'll have the people from that project there, like talking about it. And if they don't know what's like the right answer immediately, they're probably gonna look to you. So like you guys need to know like your projects that are under your like, you know, portfolio. So. That's one thing. The next thing is uh, we shouldn't try to like BS an answer like on the spot right there. That'll like get you into more trouble than just saying like, oh, I don't know. I'm going to like search Especially on in like a PDR, there can be things where like, oh, I didn't think of that. I'm going to look into that. And That's really it. Uh, we got to make sure that the slide deck is ready by that point. 